one. Loot the bodies. Bodies are looted. <laughs> How many bolts do we get? Uh, you get about uh, 30 of them. 30? Yeah. Does anybody else have crossbow? Laurel, you're uh, going to take nope. crossbow. I mean, Glenn, you're going to take a crossbow for yourself? Um. Or, yeah. I mean... You, you don't have smoke. a bow. You do not have to if you do not want to. August goes and grabs his three arrows. I guess I'll grab one, but I'm not sure if I'll keep it. Okay. And bolts. So we'll each take 15 bolts. If that's okay. Yeah. And, like, uh, even if you guys don't use them as actual, like, crossbow bolts, you could maybe find somebody that will, like, melt them down or sell them, because that's iron. Iron's, you know. Yeah, okay. Cool. Nobody had any money on them, did they? No. Ah. Lovely. I'm going to grab the dude or lady or non-binary person, I am unsure, that I downed but did not kill by the hair. I'm gonna yep. drag them to their knees, like a kneeling position, and I'm just gonna okay. stand behind them with a, uh, does anybody have a knife? Yeah, I have a dagger. Okay, can I borrow that? Mm-hmm. Dagger to the throat. All right, one of you guys gets to wake him up. Uh, sure. You guys uh, can do the questioning. I'm not really a question person. I am an intimidation person. And I'm doing the intimidating <sighs> with knife to the throat. Does anyone else? Alice sighs and tries his best to quell himself. Because... He's probably going to do the talking, but he really just wants to take that dagger to that person. <laughs> I mean, I can talk, but I'm not as good at charisma. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm going to have it so that Wick is using the help action to give Atlas advantage on the intimidation check. Because teamwork makes the dream work. Okay. okay. Studios. So we're intimidating him and then asking questions rather than persuasion and asking questions? Definitely intimidation. Okay, cool. While we're standing there in front of him, I'm going to put my longbow back up and take out my sword again just to be ready in case he tries any shit. Yeah, so persuasion is... Yes, you have advantage. Yeah, persuasion's not the sort of thing you do when someone's got a knife to your throat. Like, there's good cop, bad cop, and then there's bad cop, bad cop. And... <laughs> bad cop do you want bad. me to not? Have... Do you want me to not have the knife? No. Please have the knife. Okay. Yeah, no. This is... Would they have left the door open from where they came from? Yes! Okay, well, in that case, when they're getting ready to do that, Glencore is maybe going to prepare to send the owl out and See if it can swoop through the door and scout ahead while they're in interrogating. Right. Okay. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. All right. Uh, what uh, do you ask him? So his first question is going to be, "What is the meaning of this symbol that you all carry?" You get the feeling that he's not afraid of death. He's willing to die for the cause, but asking about one of his favorite things, he's willing to tell him, talk about it. He says, you're doomed. That's what it is. You've despoiled the land over Dweller with your Killing the soil with your quarries, with your mines. The land is angry. And when it's angry, it decides to swallow you and take its toll. The maw is coming to swallow you all. And we are the harbingers of the Black Earth's advent. 
interesting. And what if we made you be the one to move this rock? What would happen then? I'm a believer. The stone and the rock welcomes me. We know how to ask it nicely. And it gives to us all that we desire. It would only lead to your destruction, Overdweller. Air breather. So this is some cult shit, right? <laughs> I mean, they're called Black Earth Advent. I think so. That's some goth-ass shit. Gother than goth right here. Alice, you got competition. Mm -hmm. Apparently so. What does this maw look like? You've never seen a gaping chasm in your life. Don't worry. You will. Uh. Once. See. <laughs> listen, um. Oh, this is awkward. Uh, so you've never had sex before, is what I'm hearing. I knew you were going for that. I really was. Wow. <laughs> Rick, shut up and just hold the dagger. I haven't moved! <laughs> Do so without opening your mouth. So Don't be mean to me, I have a dagger. This maw happened to be a delver. Clarify what a delver is. Looks at you, a delver, one who delves. You kind of walked into that so one. you're a delver. He looks at you he's like, do you not know what the word means? <laughs> it's not a proper noun. <laughs> 20 points if you guess the definition. Well, he doesn't seem to want to give us any more information other than Black Earth Advent and we're all gonna die. And he's not afraid to die himself. You think those of us are afraid of the grave? Dude, I don't know what to think. You've been a hole in your town, swallow a bunch of kids, and all the other reaction was, Oh, nobody go down there. You fucking, you're kids in a hole. Your first reaction should not have been, Oh, don't go down there. It should have been, Oh. Kids are in a fucking hole. Maybe I should get them the fuck out. Dumbass. He just looks at you like, yes, only kids. It's a pity it didn't hit any of the adults. Alright, Atlas, you can have this one. I'm not playing fucking games with douchebags. You don't fucking say shit about kids. You don't say shit about fucking women. And you don't talk like a cultist when you are a cultist, so, you know. Cult night is one thing. This is stupid. The line, just actually being a cultist. Yeah. Cult night is one <laughs> <Yeah>. thing. <laughs> How dare you act like a cultist, you cultist. You're supposed to be surreptitious. You're supposed to be clandestine. <laughs> Listen, Wick is not smart. And neither am I, so... Even a cool, quiet cult. You're just like open and out there. <laughs> Fringe. Ew. Let him live. So, Atlas is done questioning because this is bullshit as well. And grabs the man by the throat and, uh, says, actually, he says, uh, Wick, would you do me a favor and, uh, help carry him for me for a moment? Kate. Whatever the goth princess and then Atlas, And then Atlas is going to, say, lead him towards the rat cave, and then leave us. Ooh. Alright. 
you know what? You had a chance to be nice and you weren't, so whatever Atlas wants, Atlas gets. I'm gonna go. Um, in the rat cave, Atlas then uh, questions briefly, what is the meaning of these bodies? Are they yours? No, the, the earth. It is our sacrifice. Oh, you're sacrificing too. So you sacrificed your own people for this? Oh, those aren't mine. Oh, so they're like us, outsiders. <laughs> Do we hear anything about people going missing? Yeah, I think... I think these are people from the village. I think these are the people that just didn't want to do whatever this bullshit cult shit is. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just say after getting the, that answer, Atlas has his way with him rather violently and then leaves them for the rats. Uh, I'm assuming some sort of magic explosive shit. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Glark. Oh no. Not the rats. Ah. And you, you leave him to be uh, eaten alive by the uh, by the rats. Or eaten dead, I should say. Yeah. Atlas wanted that for himself. <laughs> Alright. Uh, and it, who, for anybody that was unaware of him mentioning that those are sacrifices, he returns to the rock room and clarifies. Yeah. Uh, can I look over the bodies to see if I recognize anyone besides just the cursory, ah, uh, yes, I've seen you guys in the tavern? No, there's no, like, n nobody you know by name. Okay. Uh, now, Glenn, uh, your owl uh, sits oh, around cool. the uh, room. Uh, the 50-foot square chamber is hewn out of rock. The floor is rough but flat. The walls show chisel marks of the original buildings, and the ceiling is about 10 feet high. Identical stone doors with iron pull ring handles stand in the middle of the east, south, and west walls. In the center of the room stands a life-sized and lifelike statue of a dwarf warrior carrying a chain shirt, wearing a chain shirt, helm, and big boots. He carries a shield on his left arm and a battle axe in his right hand. Uh, the statue has been broken into roughly the head and upper torso or, uh, it's a broken statue. Uh, the pieces have all been reassembled and held together in, upright, in a stout wooden frame. So it's a broken statue that's kind of being held up, you know, in a wooden frame. Um, a dagger, along with several coins and gems, lie on the floor in front of the statue, surrounded by a ring of fine gravel. Interesting. Okay, well, when everyone's back, I relay that information to them about what's in the room and say... Beyond the door hey. that they came through? Yeah. Should we go check it out? I guess so. That sounds like a shrine. Yeah, wonder if they've been getting the gravel from the stoneworks place. Probably. Something definitely is going on worth having a closer look, I think. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It, I kind of wish there was a way for us to just get out of here and then come back without all of this bullshit happening, because I feel like we should tell, like, proper authorities. I mean, I think they already know. That's the concern. Yeah. I think I everyone knew about this bullshit, yet nobody wanted to speak up about it. Or at the very least, if we go up and someone who is not supposed to knows, they could trap us down here in a way that would be yeah, leaving no. us at a disadvantage. I meant someone, like, from from the Academy. Authorities. Yeah. Do we have any, like, connections from the, other than the dwarves we're supposed to meet? The dude in the wheelchair? Well, that's, I mean, that's out of character. Doesn't really know that. There are, that was meant to be out there of are members of the there are members of the fraternity in town. Yeah, live here. Okay. So, but do we even know if we can trust them? We don't know yet. 
But uh, why don't we take a look at this thing, and then we can maybe head back. I'm fine with keeping okay. on. Like, I'm here to protect you guys and figure out the best way to help people. I mean, it's hard to go back and be like, we found something, but we don't know what it is yet. True. Isn't that most of everything we found so far? I mean, yeah, but I mean, we we need. Well, I can't talk. It's this. At least need to go take tunnel. a look at it. I know. Mm -hmm. I'm tongue tied. Tongue tied tunnel. And the one door <laughs> could, to the east, potentially lead to that center hallway and provide us with a way out, an easy way out. So we at least know a uh, way out if we need to get out. Well, we don't know. We can assume. Onward! <laughs> they just came through this doorway, so I'm gonna assume it's not trapped, and the owl went through it just fine. Yeah. Uh, I guess Wick's just so. gonna open the door and start walking. It's already open, I think. Yes. We'll yeah. Push it open further so you guys can, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the room. So, here's statue, room, gravel. We don't want to try and take this stuff off the shrine, do we? I Give me a second here. Really, I just want to look at it. Second is given. Look, this coming from the guy who didn't even want to touch the arrow and stuff, I know not to touch creepy shit. Yeah, like... There are lines. Until we at least know what else is in here. Like on the one hand, free There's a sign. The There's a sign on the uh, framing for the dwarf statue. Okay. And uh, there is uh, before it. There's yeah, actually, there's like hundreds of assorted coins there, um, as well as uh, about six gems amongst the the coinage. And the dagger. The dagger is decorated with star motifs, has a grip of night blue leather. Um, it has some dried blood on it, but otherwise, it is shining without any tarnish on it whatsoever. You want to do your magic trick, Alice? Yep. <laughs> I'm going to do use concentration and detect magic. Uh, the dagger radiates magic. What kind of, of the uh, uh, transmutation school? Okay, but is there any magic around any nope. like, traps just, type things? Nope, just the dagger. Am I able to see what the sign on the framing says? Yep, it's it's in Jin or but Quinn Jin. Oh. My bad. No, you're good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I gotta put the right ear on there. Derp, 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 derp. You uh, know what this makes me think of, guys? Hmm. Either they've been taking things from the city above and bringing it down here to kind of wash over the city, or this was already down here. And they found it, and it's part of this extra cult shit. It does mm -hmm. look like the sign says that this statue or whatever was found in the West Quarry. In broken condition. And it's... But I now don't that see I'm... any... Guys, now that I'm actually mm -hmm. looking at this sign, this isn't a statue. I'll think. Oh, petrified. What do you mean? There we go. Because uh, ER stands for error of reason. So oh, ER. Yeah. Petrified. And that would be not too long ago. Uh, that would have been uh, two years ago. So, the dagger, 
has transmutation class of spell magic on it. The stone has transmutation on it. No, no stone. No, the stone does not. There is no other magic other than the dagger. Oh, oh, you oh, no, mean no, out no. there? In the yeah. preview, no. the other room. Yeah. The stone doesn't have transportation magic on it. There's a column of magic column. around the stone. Yeah. Maybe it's what's making it float. I had a thought, which is uh-huh. I know, surprising me thinking, huh? Um, that has blood on it, and this looks like an altar, and there were dead bodies in there. I think that's a sat- sacrificial dagger. Yeah, makes sense. Potentially. Do we he want to the door? He did say. Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying that he did say that they were doing sacrifices. Mm-hmm. Do you think it's cursed? There was mm. no curse on the dagger that I was able to see. Just the transmutation. Can you see curses through? Out of character, can you see curses through? Detect magic. Yeah. Uh, no, it won't allow you to necessarily tell there's a curse. Yes, I think, yeah, I have to tech curse or whatever. Yeah. No, I don't think it makes sense. But that said, um, cursed objects generally permanently tie them to their user. So using a cursed dagger in a sacrifice would likely set up that curse so that it would be stuck with the sacrificer. So it is unlikely that a cursed dagger okay. used for sacrifice, actively being used, would just be lying here. Right. You said that you don't think this is a statue. No. You think it's... It says Iron Store Dwarf, and there are star motifs on the dagger, so perhaps the dagger is responsible for petrifying, since could be a subset of transmutation. Yeah. Yes, transmutation's a catch-all magic as well. Like, mm-hmm. it literally means, like, anything that involves change. Yeah. yeah. So that could really mean, like, it could mean petrification. It could be physically changing something's properties. Um, even a rust proofing would be a transmutation. A what? A rust, rust proofing. Would you guys right, get mad so... if I grabbed the dagger? You feel nope. You feel like would... it's there... there's no other magic around except for the dagger itself. Well, we don't like know. Well, I mean, aren't... could be physical. The only other thing I would trapped. think we would maybe want to do before messing with anything is if we wanted to think about looking through either of those doors to see if there's anything else fishy. But I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't know. I'm gonna take my bag and sling it around my front. Um, do I have to go over the gravel, or is the gravel just kind of there to get to the dagger? Uh, you, you, you'd have to go over the dra- the go into the gravel to grab the dagger. Okay. Fuck it. I'm gonna go through the gravel. Okay. Um, and I'm getting gonna... surroundings first to make sure I can call. Too late. Uh. <laughs> I'm gonna use one of my uh, extendable javelins. Uh, I'm gonna put my bag close to the ground of the dagger, and I'm gonna take my javelin, and I'm gonna, like, golf putty the dagger into my bag. Sure. So I don't have to touch uh, make it. Me, make me a investigation check at a uh, disadvantage, please. That is fine. If I do bad, I don't care. Um, doing stupid shit oh wow okay um investigation yeah uh, well that's extra good 16 because i rolled a 19 and a 17 16. yeah okay uh, you do like one kind of scoopy push with the thing and that flips the dagger over once okay. um and you can see written on the pummel oh uh the name rezzer how do you spell that Oh, uh, one second. Damn pen. Rests. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. 
I'm gonna continue to golf this dagger into my bag. Great, you, uh... You slap it into the bag? Yep. Then I'm gonna un yeet or make the javelin small again and then I'm gonna put it back with the rest of the other javelins I have and put my yep. bag back around. Um turn around. Did you guys want any of this gold or eh? I mean we can keep going through the doors. Well, it's uh to to give you an idea of how much is lying there, uh there's a over 400 copper pieces, over 200 silver pieces, and almost 100 gold pieces, so. I mean, would have said yes, regardless of how much money was on the ground. Yeah, and gems, so. Are the um, yeah. gems and stuff within that circle? Or are they just yep. scattered about? Yeah, everything's within the circle. Everything's yeah. in the circle? Yeah. Do you guys want me to just scoop up as much as I can? Or I should we? I'm taking all of it if no one oh. is going to pick it all. <laughs> Shit. Here I'm thinking they'll sleep it all and everyone is. <laughs> I am just asking what you guys would rather do. I personally don't care. Uh, I'm going to get this looked at professionally later. And he's going to point at his bag. Uh, other than that, like, if you guys want to divvy up some, you know, treasure, cool, otherwise. You know, I'm here. Is... Can I peek well, through the back door? Like the one that goes, what is it, west? Is that okay with everyone? Do you want me to stick yeah. by you when you do that? I just feel like there could be, like, what if there's, like, people down there that are being kept and they're, like, to be sacrificed later. I just feel like we have to look yeah. in his back. Yeah, no, I'll thought. I'll stick with you. I agree. I'll stick with you, Coco Bean. And then, like, we can grab the treasure after if we decide it's it's chill, you know? Uh, Atlas is already digging. I know. Okay. Then we can do it now. <laughs> It'll give us a chance of, if anybody, I guess we could, like, short rest it here or just, like, however long it's gonna take. Um... I don't necessarily need a rest because I've only used cantrips, but well, I, mean, I used ice knife once. Half health, yeah, so. right. Well, I can, yes, I can heal someone if they want. Atlas will take a healing, but Atlas is before touching the the, the gems and whatnot. Uh, does Wick make it safely over the gravel? Yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, Atlas is gonna start picking up gems and whatnot. Yep. Yeah, you guys collect. can collect all the the monies. All the goodies. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he wrote it in the chat. Oh, sweet. Um, who has the communal um what's it again? The communal uh, pot? Yeah, I have it. Yeah, you have it. Uh, August does. Yeah, it was forty five gold and group fund. Alright, so I guess just write all of that down and then we can divvy it up later. And I guess it's Yeah, I did. Yeah. Alright, uh, do you, do you want to use a healing potion or do you want to use one of Len's spells? I'll spell it. Another yeah, spell? I mean, Thumbs whatever up. works. A potion works if we're not going to take a long rest. Yeah. Do we want to take a rest or do we want to keep going? You sound There's like you want to keep going, and I know that you want to save lives, so if we want to potion it up, we can, or we can save the potion for something else, use a spell, and then keep going. Well, I don't Is want to be a bulldozer or anything, but... Well, what's right. your spell slot? Sorry? It's your spell slot that would be used, so Atlas's concern is leaving spell slots available if something is on the other side of, as we go forward. So Atlas wants me to cast a, a spell? No, Atlas wants a potion. Okay, that's my vote too. I was, I thought you wanted spell, and I'm like... Oh, no, no, no. If you want it... Okay, I would rather do a potion. <laughs> Get thirsty, if we, don't, if we don't want to do a long rest or a short rest. Yeah, Atlas will take yeah. a potion. All right. 
What are so the potions you'll one be potion of healing. On. I think I have it. It's like one something. So that is two d four plus two. Yeah. And do I add any proficiency to that or anything? Or no, is that my plus two? Oh no, I think I think um oh. Pierce rolled. Potions do not add potions do not add any proficiency. It's straight one d four plus two. Okay. Do I roll or does it, it doesn't matter who rolls. Oh, Whoever okay. wants to roll can roll. I mean I have both of them already in my hand, so yeah. Okay. Two D four plus two? Yes. Eight, so full health. Woo! Woo okay. All right, I'm I... I can't get more yes. HP than I have max. Right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be the day? I'm gonna follow <laughs> after uh, Glencora and keep her safe. Okay, she just kind of like, can I listen up to the door and hear, so like, see if I hear anything or any sort of indications of what the door may entail? Sure. Uh, roll me perception. Can I cast guidance first? Yes. And get that ready? Because okay. this is something you're specifically purposefully doing outside of norm. I uh, rolled off my uh, thing here. Let me... Okay. Ooh, three. Seven. Two. Seven. Yeah, you don't hear anything on the other side of the door. Okay. She kind of looks back at everyone and shrugs and pushes or pulls whatever the appropriate choice is. The door opens a crack and listens to see if they can hear anything then. Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Make me a stealth check, please. Down. Still have my guidance ready. So that's a six. Eight. Boo. Don't care. Wait, I'm uh, making stealth check? No, just just Glenn. Okay. Okay. You hear uh, a kind of a <gasps> Who goes there? Who's there? Oh no. Well shit. This happened? We know who it is, I think. Oh, we do? Okay. Is it the orc? Yeah, I think it's the half orc. It sounds familiar. Uh, Oh, uh, that guy. Anyone's gonna get along with him. That water was vinegar. <laughs> you guys want to keep going? Kind of like I mean, giving you that look. I mean, I mean, he obvious, yeah. As we probably don't have the choice. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can go back through all the dead bodies. Just announce yourself that you're here to help, I guess. Okay. So Glencora speaks out in her nicest possible voice. We're just here to help. Grunt. Hmm. Yeah. It's your girlfriend. You know. <laughs> no, no, don't do that. You, you, you can't be here. You, you, you have to go. Why do we have to go? You're not supposed to be here. Well, we're here now. Well, I, yeah, you, you should go. You're not allowed here. Can I crack the door open a little bit more and kind of peek in? Yep. Uh, you peek in. Uh, this big square cylinder chamber, sorry, big square chamber has been hewed out of the rock. In the center of the chamber's west wall is a stone door. Uh, sorry, east wall, so opposite you, is a stone mm -hmm. door that has a narrow viewing slit. 
Beside the door is a set of iron bars bolted into the wall about three feet above the floor. Ten oiled chains are secured to the bars, leading up to a hole bored in the ceiling. Another stone solid door is in... Well, you're at that door. An eight-foot-tall rectangular stone stands upright in the room's center. The, room, the stone has an inscription on it that's hard to read from a distance. At the foot of the standing stone, a small human is pinned face down by rocks placed atop his arms, legs, and back. He is barefoot and wears ragged clothes. You also see uh, your friend Grunt uh, standing at, at, at opposite the door, uh, just kind of his hands on it, turned around, just looking at you, just shaking his head. Uh, with a, uh, a a bowl of uh, at his feet. Okay. Well, I guess I say, did you do this, Grund? No. No, they just told me to watch the door and and make sure to protect them with the cages. If they came through, you're not supposed to come through that door, though. That's not, you're not supposed to. Can I kind of look back and see what everyone feels is the direction they want to go? You want to go forward? I don't know. You, you Either way, you're going to have to talk to Grund about it, like, if... If we do go forward, you are going to have to talk to him, or we're going to have to talk to him and figure out if we can help that person if they're even still alive. Yeah, I just want to make sure that you guys are okay to take a step forward sort of thing. We'll do what we need to. Okay. Um, as you um, enter, you, the, the, the pink human, their, their hands kind of twitch a little bit, and you can hear them faintly say, Help! Me in a in the voice of a boy. Child. Yes. Oh hell no. So I kind of say to Grand. Do we know the people who told you for us to watch for people here? Or the people who told you to do this? Uh, <clears throat> I do. Yes, I know who they are. Atlas speaks up. Was it the Wagoneer that you live with or work with that made some sort of signal to you, perhaps? He, he told me to come here. He made the signal. I come here and I wait and make sure it's safe. We don't want anybody hurting the boy. And he points to the boy pinned under the rocks. Uh, which but you don't look like they're being hurting the boy. I not hurt the boy. I leave boy alone. The rocks are hurting the boy, though, Grunt. Well, that's silly. His father put him there. Uh, boy Wick's was a walking. bad boy. Wick's, Wick's going to walk forward. Wick is just walking forward, and he's kneeling in front of the kid. No, I was about to do the same thing, like yeah, going no. ahead and just... No, Wick is, Wick is just kneeling in front of this kid and, like... He, the stones were, have been placed to pin him down, not to crush or hurt him. But he can't move. And he looks up, he's, he's shaking. You can hear his stomach growl. And it looks like he's been there for at least a day, possibly even two. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna start picking yeah. up. Yeah, I'm picking up one. I'm of gonna help. Things. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're getting the kid out of here, or getting him out from under the box. Is that okay? Did his father say that's okay? He told us it was just fine. He he told us to take these off. Okay, okay. You didn't buy any pickles. Well, we have to meet you in the market, don't we? <laughs> that's okay. I've got pickles here. Any offers? Uh, some pickles to, to Glenn. She gives him several coppers. Maybe oh, we'll say three. No, no, 
to be no, done. No, I'm not selling pickles here. I'm giving you pickles. If I was selling them, I'd be in the market. Well, that's great because I'm giving you these coins. Oh. Okay. Deal? Okay. okay. Can you do me a favor, Grant? Yes. Could you not tell anyone that we came this way? We just don't want you to get hurt. Ron doesn't like to keep secrets. I know, but we are going to figure this out and we'll deal with it all. We just don't want you to have to get involved at all here. I don't want to. They told Brad not to keep secrets, just to keep some secrets. I don't know. I don't know. I just want to sell pickles. I don't want to be. I don't well, want to. If you Honestly. only want to sell pickles, what are you doing down here? What if we could help you set up a pickle business? I've got a pickle biz this. Grand. Atlas um. steps forward and considers grunt. Um and then says that says grunt. We're not keeping any special secrets from anyone. We want to make certain that we can surprise the other people with a big party when we get out of here. So you can't tell them that we were here or else it'll ruin the surprise. Make a persuasion check. Be nice to me. Don't forget you have inspiration. Hey, natural 20. Hey. Yeah. Five. So 25. The idea of running a surprise party for his friends delights him. He says, okay, okay. Then I can stay here and watch if you go through the cage room? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And I will catch you with the cage if you go through the room. But I will pretend you're not in here. And he gives an exaggerated wink. <laughs> Wait, Justice. Did he say that he will catch us with the cage if we go through that other room? I think that's what he said. Yeah. That's what I said, yes. That wasn't a character base. And he gives a th gives a thumbs up. Tell Would you piece. only hurt us if you went through ground or anything? Pardon? Wait, what? I could send Pardon? my owl through, right? Through the bars? Well, he'd have to open the door. Oh, it couldn't squeeze through? No, because it's a little slit he's looking through. Fine. Um, meanwhile, the, the boy is, is begging for, for water and something to eat. He's hungry. Yeah, I'm, I'm giving him, like, yeah. I'm giving him my water and what's, what left I have of what I had of breakfast. Like, I have no more breakfast and I'm gonna have to get more now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Listen, yeah, August is gonna, like, right. kneel down and, for me, be, like, like check him over and ask him what his name is. Thank you. Thank you, kind sirs. My name is, is, is Brelin. Broden? Brelin. Feel it, please. <laughs> do, 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 do. Give me one moment. You're fine. I'm taking notes slower because my pen decided that it wanted to leak all over my fingers. 
Oh no. Okay. I put the name in the in the lore section. Okay. Oh no, we've adopted an orphan. <laughs> he, he just he just breathes. He says, "Thank you." Yeah. Your and, father put you down here. Yes, yes. I was a bad boy, so he put me down here to to teach me to manners. That's not how manners are taught, my dude. No. It's, that's that, that. Well, I was a bad boy. That's how it's done. That's not how it's done. That's called abuse. No, my father would never abuse me. I love him. He loves me. You can love someone that doesn't I just, mean that they're not being I, good to you, sweetie. Trust me. I know that from personal experience. I didn't deliver a message I was supposed to to Ilmeth because I was too busy looking at candies. I was a bad boy. I get a spanking. That's how it works. This isn't the same boy as before, right? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, you say he's been down here for a while. Yeah. Atlas looks at Grunt and asks him, Grunt, you said there's cages in the next room. Is there anything else in this room, in that room? No. No, it's, it's just a hallway of cages to catch people who are going through who don't belong there to keep them safe. That's what I was told. Are there people in the cages now? No. Okay, good. Is there, is the hallway lead somewhere else? Well, it leads, if you go through the hallway, it, it leads to, 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 to Ilmeth. So, uh, you can get through if you don't activate the cages. So, yes, it's, it goes it's through the door, and then you go, and, you, and it goes to Ilmeth. It goes to Ilmeth. Have you been there before? Uh, I was at Ilmeth earlier today to drop a couple bottles of pickles. And that's where I met my girlfriend. Oh God. We're getting married. She doesn't know it yet, though. They all just look at Glenn like <laughs> slowly. Oh, Wickham does not look at Glenn. Look at Glenn when that happens. He's still focused on the kid. Uh, Glenn looks, tries her best not to look uncomfortable, but those that know her know that's an uncomfortable face. But Gron, yeah. who doesn't know her, probably is unaware. That's an uncomfortable smile. Maybe you shouldn't make decisions for other people without talking to them first. So is, hold on. Ilmeth, is that the same as Rathar? Ilmeth's the wagoner. Okay. Okay. The stuffed wagoner. So. Okay. So it leads directly to him. Grunt, do you know oh, I see. why? Okay, Ilmeth so his has son has a path directly underneath his house. Because, well, because this is part of what he does. And he tells me, when he's not buying the pickles, sometimes, Grunt, you gotta watch the hallway, just in case. So I watch the hallway, and Rothar says, you gotta watch me boy, just in case. So I watch the boy. And I do a good job of it. See, boy's not going anywhere. Right where Rotham left him. Right. And then do, let us know that we could come get him. Do we know who Rothar Hatherhand is? No. Okay, because I guess I was assuming that he was the Wagoner's son, but I guess not. 
Okay. Well, didn't the Wagner's boy come out of the Wagner shop? I thought maybe it's his other son, but I guess not because okay. it says it says son of Rothar. Yeah, Brelin is a son of someone you have yet to meet. Okay. Okay. How old is uh, Brelin? He's 11. Okay. So, too big to, like, do the situ situate the kid on the hip. Right. I beg to differ, but, uh... <laughs> I mean, you're a pretty beefy guy. Yes, Carry him on your back. Out of character, I am 5'3", and the concept of an 11-year-old on my hip literally makes me feel like I'm going to die. Yeah, you can carry him on your back, and, like, he's probably skinny and light. Your piggyback rides are more fathomable in my brain. I'll ask him if he wants one. <laughs> No, if I, if they see that I'm out, if I'm not under the rocks, I, I don't know. They <laughs> don't want to make things worse, you know? Buddy, they don't get much worse than this. They can. They can't. If a boy is, doesn't do the punishment when they're supposed to, they get punished worse. No, if it gets, if they get, if, if you get punished worse, then that's, that's unacceptable. We're not going to accept that. Well, I don't accept it either, so I don't want to be punished worse. No, there should not be a punished worse. Shouldn't have gotten to this punishment. They should, this shouldn't be punishment at it all. It's just what is done. This is normal. It's not. Look, if it were normal, it, it wouldn't be done by the people in charge. No, the people in charge are the ones that are doing it wrong on purpose. Because they're making you try- they're trying to make you think it's normal. You guys are seeing this very, like, not chipper, not happy side of Wick. This is not- mm -hmm. this is not your sun- your ray of sunshine. Mm -hmm. It's tough love is what it is. No. No, buddy. No. This isn't tough love. Tough love still has love in it. This isn't love. We haven't ever been to Jalessa yet, have we? Is that true? No. Okay. Atlas is thinking. This is what all the all the kids, if they're bad, that's what happens to them. So what are we supposed to do with the kid if we rescue him? We can't give him back to his dad. No. I was thinking about taking him to the constable. But he said the people in charge are doing this. He's just the constable is. Your constable's not in charge. Do you know the constable? Y yes. Halbert's not in charge. Are He's the... not in charge of this, or in oh. charge of the town. Anything. He's not in charge. Who he is... doesn't do anything. Who's in charge? Well, my father's one. What does he do? Oh, well, he... Look. Does that have something to do with religion? Uh, no. There's no religion involved. The church is not in charge. The, the, the Baragustus, Marlandro, and Ilmes, those, I know they are, what they do is they make sure no one disturbs the Delvers. Who, and they're, they're, they're here and they're buried and we have to keep them safe and well established. And they watch the moving stones for signs. And by doing so, they lead the village to prosperity. They are. Have you seen the Delvers? Well, well no, no, but that's what they've said. I, I'm not. 
I'm not a believer, you see. I'm too young. But one day I will be. Braylon? Where's your mom? My my mother. She she passed away a while back. Yeah. I, I never met her. I was too young. Can I uh can I tell you a secret, Berlin? If your mother knew about this, she'd be mad. Because if I know and moms, and I do, I know so many moms, if they knew that their kid was going through this, doesn't matter any kind of punishment. A real mom would not let their, their husband, their your father, they would not let this happen. No, this, this is, is this, normal. No, honey, this is not. Normal. This is, this is what the village does. Do you want to get I out don't... of the village? No, I, I love my dad. I love this village. If you loved your dad, why were you asking for our help when we walked in this room? Oh. Well, he, he pauses for a bit and he says, I was hungry. Father doesn't allow their child to go hungry. It's, it's no different than going to your bed without supper. I will say that again. <laughs> no parent should allow their child to go hungry. Be stuck under rocks, go to bed without supper, I don't care. That's what is done. All the kids are. Hey, is there anyone else out there in the village that you really feel safe with? I feel safe with with Uncle Morlandro. Uh, that's one of the people he said is in charge. Uh... What about what someone else we've met? I I don't feel like he's gonna be safe anywhere within town. I know. I mean, basically, our options, as far as I can tell, are uproot the kid and take him somewhere else entirely. Try to figure this thing out, and maybe solve the problem. Leave him. Apparently, I also trust Grunt. There was this man that I met when we took when I took the wagon. He kind of stopped the stoneworks lady from stopping me coming down here. Maybe we should look for him. He's a monitor. We do this kind of thing. The guy in the wheelchair? Yeah. Do you know who that is? She asks Berlin. No. He failed matter. that role. <laughs> you failed the role to know who he is. No, he has the child. Oh. Unless he failed too. Yeah. No, no, you failed the role to know who the he guy in the wheelchair the, is. He has the Brayland. A Brayland. Uh, or she has Brayland. I don't know anybody in a wheelchair. Well, he's a monitor, and this is the kind of stuff we do. Keep people safe. But you, I don't want to be a bad boy. And I don't. Father's gonna find out. And I we escape. will go talk to your father. Wick is gonna Wick is gonna back up and boy. leave the room. He's gonna go back into the other room for a minute. Okay. Atlas tries to clarify to the boy. No one's going to know that you're a bad boy because nothing bad happened we came and we helped you out if anybody was bad it's us and we will take the punishment does that sound good you promise promise okay Glenn Cora just kind of like backs out of the room as well and she sees that's kind of something's going on there just to check on with 
Atlas turns to Grunt and says, and asks, have you met this boy's father? Yes, he's a, uh, he's a, he's a, he's a good person. He, he always buys my pickles some of the time. Good. Uh, can you sometimes he takes free pickles and I'm fine with that. Uh, hang on one second. Hanging. Be right back. Oh. What did you do? What did oh, you no. do? What oh. did you do? Ravage. Well, possibly I ravage. Baby! Sweet daughter. Oh. Bite him. What you did. Okay. You're good. I love her. You're good. <laughs> there was a lot more noise than it should have been. Light of my life. <laughs> All right. Uh, to answer your question, not really. That's not their deal. Okay. What? Uh, I sent a private message. Oh. Yeah. Um. Atlas asked Grunt, "Do you know where Braylon and his father live?" Yes. They they live in our house just out. East outside town. In a house outside town. You're not that far outside. You're one of the farms. And what does this Roth Rothar? What does he do? Well, I I don't know exactly. Other than buying pickles, I assume he he, he grows some. Some wheat. I, I've I've seen him sell some wheat now and then. And would you be willing to take us to meet him so we can talk to him about make certain that Braylon's not in any more trouble? Well, if it's to keep the boy safe, sure. But is this after the surprise party? You don't want to. I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise. Oh, yeah, no. We want to make certain that everyone is able to come to the surprise party. So right. we want to make certain that Braylon is allowed and he's not in any trouble. So we want to make certain oh. he's safe first before we Okay. Have this is very complicated. How's this? Let me know when you want to talk to him. Come meet me at the market. I'll take it to him. That sounds excellent, Grunt. I can't leave here right now. I've got to watch to make sure you guys get caged if you go through the whole way. So right. I'm kind of busy right now. I do apologize. No, not at all. You're doing a great job. Thank you. And so are you! See Braylon, Braylon's father, will let him know that you're doing a great job, too. Thank you! I, I, I feel appreciated. You should. Uh, Atlas, uh, Grunt, I'll let you get back to that. I wanted to go talk to my friends and let them know what our plans are going to be for getting the surprise party started, okay? No problem. Don't let me know a thing the less I know, the less secrets I got it. Okay. Perfect. And you'll be just as surprised later, I promise. He 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 gives a toothy smile and says, Very good. Very good. I made a second friend today. Atlas goes up to August, who's apparently the only one in the room right now, correct? Yeah. Well, I yeah. think Braylon's still in here with us, but Ooh. um and points out Grunt here says that this is supposed to lead to the Wagoner's place. So well, we don't want to go through his cages. shop or the cages. So I say we go back the way we came. Exactly. Come on, buddy. You wanna you know what? This guy likes to give <laughs> likes to treat kids to candy. But uh August. Uh-huh. Amazing. Uh just I'll get, this is without Braylon hearing off to the side. Okay, yeah. Uh, if we're taking the kid back through the way we came, 
I don't think that the uh, the room with the rats is quite something that you guys would think that a little boy should be seeing. It's a little bloodier than when we first left it. And if he'll allow us to carry him, we can, I can cover him with my cape. That might work. But let's go see about the other two. Maybe Wick can... Uh... Yeah, I think Glencora wants to go check on them. Yeah. <laughs> so they're going to take Braylon and go back to the... Uh... Hello, back out. Right. The dwarf room. There we go. And uh, there, Glencora is trying to comfort Wick. Uh, Wick is not in the the dwarf room. He went to the other other room, um, the room where everybody was fighting. He's just kind of sat, like behind the door, just sort of crying into his arms. Mm -hmm. Is it okay that Glencora goes and finds him, or does he want to be alone? Like, she can go up to him, but he's just, he's just not gonna respond. He's just gonna cry. That's fair. Well, she goes up and just kind of puts a hand on his shoulder. Like, as soon as she does that, her. he flinches a little bit, but he doesn't, like, pull away. But he does flinch, and he just, he just cries for a little bit. Yeah, she just kind of stands there quietly. Yeah, we go to find them. And did you say? I said we we go further on when we realize they're not in the dwarf room. And yeah, yeah. Until we they're not hard to find. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do we want to look and see if that one door, just sort of out of character, leads back to the main path without having to take the kid through the rat destruction room? Uh, the other door we didn't go through? Not the yeah. cage door. Yeah, like, because that... In the door oh, like chamber. If my map brain is correct, that should potentially lead to that main tunnel that we branched off, maybe? I mean, if you guys, if you guys want to like investigate the door and make sure you guys don't like hear anything on the other side, yeah. I mean, we got a child now. <laughs> True. Wick's not much well, help right now. I uh, guess when Cora can go and maybe she can listen and see if she can hear anything. Uh, mm -hmm. Atlas says, August, if you would like to comfort your friend and. I will go with Glencora to investigate this other door. There, have a have a big map. Sort have of. a big map. Yeah, have a map that? situation. <laughs> okay. So, does the big black square mean that's a room, or is that just blocked out? It means. Oh. We haven't gotten there. It means it's a part it's of the map. Like... I'm not showing you. It's so not the actual I, perimeter of a room. Yeah, it's literally, I'm not showing you that what's oh, on that map. No, that's, that's all that means. Was there. Thank you. Are we in room seven or are we in room four? In you're seven. you're in the, six. well, technically we're right now hallway. you're you're between six and seven. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, is that where we fought? Was it in the hall? Yeah. yeah we fought in nine. Well, like, he's behind the door. I guess. Yeah. Go down six. Yeah, at six. I'll say down six. Yeah. And four is where Grunt is, correct? Yes. Okay. So was the oh I see. Oh, so I was turned around. Yeah. So that guy actually goes further away. Okay. It doesn't was... mean it doesn't come out somewhere else, but yeah. no, I was turned around. I thought that led like I thought yeah, so... the was reversed. Yeah, Grunt is Grunt is in room four at that yeah. door. Okay. At that okay. door. So going back, saying it like that, well, yeah, it's probably Nilsen the best is back that way. I mean, we have no idea what's going to keep going. I mean, if we want to get out of here now, I say we go back the way we came and I'll just carry the child and put my cape over his face. Yeah. 
The main question that I have before we leave, though, is if we leave, people are going to notice we leave and we yeah. might be able to sneak back in. It's true, too. So I don't know if that's worth like discussing resting. They going forth later come down or? here. They don't use a giant hole in the middle of town. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a way to get in and out of here. Yeah. It could be the tunnel that goes south or something in the blank spot or something. Well, I'm assuming the blank spot the is the cage room. Yeah. Wow, we could have. <laughs> Unless we want to convince Grunt not to trigger the caves. Cages. Well, I mean, regardless, I think the question now is, like, whether we go through the cage room or whether or not we go through the hallway and back out. If we come out where we went in, we're trying to sneak a little boy past right in front of Elmuth's store and anyone else who might be looking on at us crawl out of the hole. Yeah, or we try to find an, another exit either through the tunnel that goes out of the hole, goes south, or by going through the door outside of seven that we haven't gone through. Look at it this way. The cultists had to get in somehow. Exactly. Uh, Glenn. True. But we don't know where else we might come out of either. We might end up going through Marlandro's house or something. We have... Grunt also had to get down here. Yeah, you guys he lost them towards somewhere. the hole. He ran and came down here. Yeah, he so, came down here from somewhere is there and it any wasn't way We can convince him to tell us how he got down here. He wouldn't have gone past Wick when he was in the tunnel. Would he have like in that big open cavern? He wouldn't have snuck by that way. Would Wick have noticed? I mean, he went north. Yeah, he went north. So, yeah. okay, he so he didn't go that way. Yeah, anywhere near that pit. Okay, that was just I wanted to make a hundred percent sure that he could not yeah. have come by that way. Well, I wonder if maybe that other dead end uh, tunnel goes out somewhere that we didn't go. We didn't go north or out of two. Not that if it looks like it does I mean it doesn't mean there's not a but the north door of the two that we had to choose between was less traveled than the south true door. that's true so they likely don't use it should we take a vote well I'd rather come to some kind of something we, we feel comfortable with front first ask him what's through the the other door i mean i guess we can we can go try and see if he'd give us some more information but if we push him too far he might tell to someone else everything like you know what i mean yeah i'm not sure how smart he is to i don't i don't know i don't know what to do i'm good with whatever choice i just see risk either way fair I suppose since I already went with this whole surprise shtick, I might as well keep with it. So I can go at least charm my way into seeing <laughs> if we could just tell him that we're a little lost and got turned around. Okay. So Atlas is going to head back into the room where Grunt is standing guard. Yeah, I'm gonna stay back a little bit, but not leave him completely alone on his own so. okay um grunt my dear friend right so we were talking and we realized we're not from around here right grunt and we're a little turned around so we want to get the surprise party planned i'm not going to tell you all the things so you're as surprised as everyone right but we don't know how to get back to town so that we can start planning. Do you know the way? What it's door just, you used? Yeah, you just 
You just gotta go a couple of doles that way. I would, uh, he starts counting on his hands. Oh, no. Many doors that way, not that far. You know, just uh, you know, just get by Baragostas there and just tell him Grunt says hi. And uh, after that, you go through the rooms with the cool, with, with, with the neat, floaty rocks. And, and you're there. You just, just go out the door. There's a, there's a door in the north that's hard to find if you don't know how to look for it. You just touch the wall the right way and you open the door and that'll lead you straight to the quarry. In the floaty rock room. In, in, well, in, in the floaty rock room. Right. Okay. But you gotta go that way. Just go straight. Don't, okay. don't go to the south, to, to that door. That room with the floaty. Oh, I realize that, um, not that floaty rock room. Oh, okay. The so real the floaty rock room. The real floaty rock room. Gotcha. The Augustus you talk of is that the dwarf. No, yeah, he's talking about me. No, no, Bar Augustus. He's, he's he's an okay guy, bit of a drinker. I'm okay. Oh, okay. Thank God. I thought he was talking about me. Like, walk right past right. me. Keep going straight. <laughs> Right. Past the room behind us. And right. Then find the door on the wall to the north. And right. We'll right. You see there. a couple of doors. You go go through a hallway, and then you go through the floaty rock room. It's on the north side of the floaty rock room. Okay. And where does that lead us in town? That, so we don't get lost when we get out of town. That that goes out to to the quarry. Okay. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. I think we should be able to find our way once with that information. You're very good at directions. Thank you. It feels good to be appreciated. You've a great help. All right, August. Let's head back so we can start the surprise. Yeah. They head back to the others. And Atlas says, Glenn, you were correct in try wanting to try the other door. The one that we didn't go down. Well, and I guess there's a bunch of doors go. that we're going. Go straight until we get to another floaty rock room. The real floaty rock room. And there's a hidden door to the north side of the room. Well, then we'll get the way. Quick's gonna get up. He's not gonna say anything, but he's gonna get up and follow them. Alright, so we take... Glencora's just gonna, like, wait a second and just, like, casually walk beside Wick. And so, like, just, like, kind of taking her time and just, like, holds his hand as they walk out. And he gives her hand a squeeze. No. Yeah, we're headed down. The... So Do you think I should still west. hide the cake, maybe? I don't know. Probably. Yeah, you maybe can you want... Yeah, I was about to say, do you... Keep him warm. Yeah, do you want to take a rest and have me carry you, bud? Okay. okay. You cut out there. That is okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we head out through the west door. Okay. The passage, 10 feet wide, 10 feet high, and hewn out of the rock, runs 40 feet ahead. A small lantern hangs from a hook in the wall next to the door at the east, at the west end of the passage. Sitting on a wooden stool by the lantern is a balding, beardless old male human in patched and faded work trousers and a matching tunic. He's idly whittling a stick. I'm assuming that's Augustus. He looks up. And he sees you. I have the kid under my cloak. <laughs> and his whittling slows down. His eyes get 
wide. Uh, Wick is, is a little bit. Wick is just gonna he, say in the most deadpan voice, "We're passing through," and that's it. He slowly puts down his whipling. He puts his hands up. Don't kill me. I'm just here to watch the door. No, we're a friend of a. Uh... Oh wait, should I say that? Wick's just gonna yeah, go to the door. Passing through. Open it. I just ask one favor. What is it? Please. Please don't provoke the wrath of the Delvers. Don't fuck with the stones in there. Oh, yeah, you can go the where. You can go. You can go. It's all that. We haven't all fucked right. with the stones yet. I think you're good. Okay. Just. We don't want to fuck with the stones. Wick is holding the door open for people to go through. (laughs) Also. Yeah. Glencora follows, even though she thinks she wants to ask more questions, but realizes it's not the time. (laughs) When everybody flicks a silver cult piece at him and says, buy a drink on me. She was I think when everybody's through the door, uh, Wick's gonna close it behind them, but he's gonna stay in the room with the other man, and he's gonna look at him directly, and I'm gonna send you what he says in private. Oh, shit. Oh. Because I feel like See, that's something. Oh. How dare you keep secrets from You're... me? I will roll for investigation. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Uh, I sent it to you. Uh, oh, wait. So, Wick opens the door for everyone, lets them all through, and then closes it behind them in the hallway. Yeah. yeah. He stops okay. to talk to that guy. Gotcha. Oh boy. Oh boy. Secrets. Whispers. They make me feel so anxious. <laughs> I'm going to create my own secret and I'm not going to tell. You just got to get the right information out of him eventually. <laughs> this is something that not even August knows. Yeah. <sighs> Curious like a cat. Atlas is just meh. I wish I could play a char- was playing a character that had like a cop against the door. Just trying their best to listen. <laughs> Don't don't go away. I'm in the middle of looking at that. notes people lost it
Has anybody had a nat one yet? I don't think they have. I don't think so. And Wick uh, rejoins, and there is a sobbing man. Wick closes the door. Ready? Yep. Right. So this room. Floaty rock room. An enormous chamber with a 20 foot ceiling has been carved out of the rock here. A lighted lantern rests on the floor near the center of the room. An odd array of stone monoliths, some upright standing stones, and others arranged in three stone arches, stand around the chamber. Four, there are six low stone slabs are set against the walls around the perimeter of the room. Each holds humanoid bones, dressed in scraps of tattered cloth and rusted iron. Everyone to roll me a perception check. Can I cast guidance? Uh no. Boo. This is one of those ones you had to have prepared. Damn it. <laughs> I don't see shit. I'm too focused on the kid. Cause I rolled a five. It's what is it a that five. we're rolling? Perception. Perception? Oh good. Um yep. I also rolled a five. I, I got a seven. Going through some stuff right now. Wow. Terrible. Yeah. Come on, Atlas. <laughs> Can't see through his tears. Come on, Atlas. It's <laughs> all on you. Hey, hold on. Perception. Oh, I thought he said eight. <laughs> <laughs> no. Twenty-one. Phew. 21. It's about to ask Bray Br Lynn what he sees. <laughs> the the three of you are attending to the kid and making sure that he's safe. Atlas, you see the hem of a brown cloak just behind one of the larger rocks. And this is something you notice. The rocks aren't actually on the ground. They're hovering about a couple inches above the ground. And you can see in the crack underneath a pair of sandals. Where the cloak where where the uh where the robe is. So Atlas is going to roll initiative. Oh boy! <laughs> All of us. Yep. Twelve. Oh, I got a twelve. But let's see. I get plus oh one thirteen. And move nine. you roll August? I said 13, yeah. 13, okay. And ten. Wick rolled a 9. Atlas rolled a 10. Yeah. And what did uh, Glenn roll? 12. All right, uh, yeah. August, Glenn, and uh, Wick are surprised, so they will not act in this first round. That's fine. Um, you notice, uh, Halbert, Atlas, you notice the rogue figure is trying to make his way to the north uh, west corner of the room by kind of hiding behind the stones and just basically creeping behind a stone towards the back. So we're at, like, the white block at the door? 
Yes. And he's kind of moved from behind the, the, the pair of big stones there to, to that one in the, the kind of in the back there. He's gone uh, trying to go unnoticed, but Atlas sees it. Sees it plainly. So Atlas. They did, they're behind the two rocks? The big one? They went from they went from behind the two rocks to the one in the back there. The back. Yeah. Like the top left corner, sort of. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That one. Yes. And what's our okay? August, Glenn, Marcan, Atlas, Wes. So I'm gonna tell them point to the direction that this guy is in. We don't have the advantage or anything if I talk to them and say, hey, he's in that top corner of the room. I mean, you can tell them. Yeah. Uh, and that's not that's not using your action. Okay. So yeah, Atlas relays where he sees this guy at. And... Okay. And then he is. This is going to be a case where we have to approach him in order to be able to attack. Yeah, each one of those squares is ten feet. So. It's ten feet. Okay. Yeah. So, so if he's behind that rock, you'd have to. Well, it depends on what you wanted to do. Right. Right. Uh huh. But a magic missile would be able to reach. It's got a reach of 120 Absolutely. feet. Absolutely. Beautiful. So I'm going to use my handy dandy wand. And since there's only one person that Atlas sees, we're not going to use an extra charge or anything. We're just going to use the standard first level spell. Where are my 3d4 plus 3, please? Oh, oh no. Where did they go? Oh, there it is. Caltrips. So we've got four, three, and three. All so, in the dude. So that's a total of ten. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Right? I guess it's on like Donkey Kong now. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Uh, Wick gets skipped this round. Uh, we go straight to August. Uh, you see um, Atlas's put up, there's a guy there, and immediately... <laughs> um, August is gonna put down the boy, and just kinda like, you know, push him back a little bit. Um, and I'm just gonna take out my sword and ready an action if he, or uh, an attack if he should come towards us. Um, and just yell at him, we know you're here! It's just you stand down. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, Glenn? Um. So we are, it's going to be at least over. So that's like at least a hundred feet, right? Yeah. Okay. Trying to make sure my my sense there was correct on that matter. Um I guess there's not much she can do from this place. However, she is going to 
pre-prepare um, let's go with ice knife again all right and what's the trigger um oh if they attack us if he attacks okay us. all right Wait, so is Atlas the only person that's actually attacked this dude? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you prepare your ice knife? He hasn't actually attacked us yet, has he? No. <laughs> so, I'm also a melee guy and I can't attack from all the way over here. So. Oh, okay. Maybe I shouldn't have done that for a while. No, you're fine. I mean, you do you. We've committed. <laughs> That's really the reason I, you know, held my action is because I wouldn't have been able to reach him all the way over there. And there's, I'm a more of a protector, so I'm here to stand back here with y'all. I got yeah. confused. All right. Um. Well, he's gonna turn around because at this point, you know, is it silly to to try to to um uh, uh to get away, sneak away. So he turns around and he, it, it, his hands move up and he, he, he traces a triangle, like his hands come up in an apex and then come down in a wide triangle and then they come together with it, with a clap. And suddenly you feel the ground itself, the earth starts to fly up. And then start to 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 uh, uh, glow into magical energy and 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 coalesce amongst you. Everyone gets to make me uh, wisdom saving throws, please. Oh no! Is that a fifteen plus? No, no, no. Your difficulty on this is going to be thirteen. So okay, I made a fifteen. A saving throw okay. is a d20 plus your whatever it is. Correct? Yeah, whatever it says in your saving throw. Yeah. Box. Oh, okay. Natural 20. Woo! Nice. Good. Plus Yay. a five. Nice. Oh, yeah. Glen Coco. Yeah. All right. So you save. You save. Uh, 15. Pierce. That's safe. Uh, Wicker Man. 14. Okay, so you you manage to realize that it's not a physical attack against you. So you just stomp down, you steal yourself, and you resist the magic from entering your body. Did uh, I notice if he attacked um, Braylon as well, or like aimed anything at no. Braylon as well? No. Sorry. Okay. Uh, he is yeah. out of range of ice knife, however. He's oh. doing it from 120 feet away. But that's okay. That means you you still have Damn. it at the ready. That's range. I totally forgot about that. And uh, that, I think, is all he's going to do. Yes, that's all he's going to do. He is not going to close the gap. Uh, Atlas. Mm, well. Uh... I'm going to actually use one of my spell slots of Magic Missile. Right. And hopefully I don't have cats attacking my dice. Four, seven, okay. Three. So oh. again with the ten. Damage. Nice. So he's going to cast um, his lunar moths and have them fly right for this dude. 
Okay. Uh, Gwen. So I guess I don't think I have anything that can reach out. No, but you can close the gap, possibly. Yeah, you can go closer and then use whatever you... Yeah, you have 30 feet of movement, so you can move up oh. to him 30 feet. The, the other thing is you've already used your action to prepare it, so you can move... You can use the dash action uh -huh. so that your action's used to move, and then your... Um, and then your normal movement. So you can move up to 70 feet, you can close the gap, and then you still have your action ready so that when he moves... Okay. Phew. So in that case, can I use my dash to kind of go like straight across, like right in between the, like right where the nine is? Yep. You know, like right in between, so I'm still in line of my friends. And yep. then should I be able to see him from that angle or is he right around behind? He's kind of behind the rock, but, uh, well, you can have like, what, even if you miss with the ice knife, it's going to hit the wall behind it and the frozen explosion will still hit him. Okay. So, so in that case, if I can still get him with that, and yeah. I can keep view of both of my friends and him, second guess. then I will stick in that spot and cast it. Well, thank it. you. Uh, you have to, because it's a readied action, though, you do have to, he still has to trigger it. Oh, because he, so he has it. Right. Yeah. So do I still get an action, a normal action then? No, because... You're using your action to move anyways. Okay. Right. So sure. I'm just kind of waiting. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to fear around again, and he's going to try to cast another spell. Now you can do your ice knife against him. Okay. So I roll so a 20. Yep. 15. That's a... Uh, do you get a what's spell your attack modifier? Oh. Yeah, you spell do get a spell attack, attack modifier. Oh, okay. I forgot to use that. Thank you. So that's a 20. That's 20. That's a hit. And uh, what's the saving throw for the, uh, uh, the area? Of the Thank you. And your save DC is 13, I believe? Yes. Okay. So he doesn't take the cold damage, because he saves against that. Mm -hmm. But he does take 1d10 piercing damage. Okay. So let me roll that. Wait, do please roll that. Oh, it's a 1. Rip. Damage is damage. Yeah. Ooh. Now he's going to cast his spell. Everyone but Glencora, roll me a wisdom save, please. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Mm. Uh, natural 20. Nice. Oh, I don't Lots think I made this one. That's uh, a six. That's a failure. Yeah. Okay. 16. That's a save. All right, so August. Uh huh. So August doesn't have any tits yet. All right. An affected target speed is halved. Okay. You get minus two penalty to AC and dexterity saving Ooh. throws. Okay. You can't use reactions. On your turn, you can use either an action or a bonus action, but not both. You can't make more than one melee or range attack during your turn by any means. And ah. if you if you try to cast a spell with an action time of one action, well, that doesn't matter you have to... how a spell. Yeah. So So I can only do one attack on my turn. Yep. Okay. You are slowed. I'm slowed. Mm -hmm. How long does it last? Concentration up to one minute. You can make another wisdom save at the end of your turn to okay. brush it off. Gotcha. And he has to concentrate on it. So if he breaks concentration, he will also lose the effect. Cool. 
All right. Atlas. Hold on. Get out of my way. Stop. <laughs> Absolutely not. Sir, this is not playtime. Move. Okay. There you go. Out of my way. Okay. Wait, so does Atlas also have a dash action? Yep, but to dash uses up your action, so you can't uh, cast a oh, spell. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, the reason you already had Glenn could do it before, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Well, Atlas is just going to... Damn it. Okay. Um... He's just going to use his action to move 30 feet. You don't need to use an action to do that. You can just move 30 feet. Oh, okay. It's you need the action to move 60 feet. Okay. If he moves 30 feet, how close does that put him? Put you within 90 feet of him. Uh, he'll use his action to move 60 feet. Okay. Does that bring him up next to Glencora, or? That's up to him. I mean, yeah, he'll go up next to Glencora. Okay. Okay. It's quick time. I'm looking something up really quick. It's rolling very slow, or loading very slowly, otherwise I would just have it. I'm pressed. I feel like I can't use okay. um, Thunder Wave amongst the rocks we can't move. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend that. I was actually worried that he was going to trigger the rocks when it would <laughs> hit the ground. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> um so I'm going to move forward. Mhm. Mm um I guess the 30 feet that I can. How far does that put him? Right. Yeah, it puts you uh within three boxes of the entrance there. I mean so 90 feet 90 ish feet away from him. 90 ish. Okay. So uh I can't use the one thing that I was going to use. I got to use the other one. Um, I'm going to just see this guy. Do I see him? Like, actually, visual line of sight? Yep. Yep, okay. you can get into a position where you can see him. Okay. I'm just still kind of upset. Like, all my energy was drained, but now it's back, and I'm, I'm pissed, and I'm gonna rage, and I'm gonna throw a javelin at this motherfucker. And, Neat. fuck it, I'm gonna do it reckless, because I'm angry. <laughs> Like, does he not realize we have a child? There's a child in the way. For my javelins, that's... 17. It's uh, a hit. Yeah. Gonna... Actually, no. You called out to me and I'm not gonna play baby games. Well, okay. Yeah, no, you definitely called out to me. Um... Ten. Oof. Yeah. Baby mad. I, I would. He kind of deserves it. Baby mad. Wait. I don't. That's the wrong number. Damage go up, not down. Mm -hmm. And we go to uh, August. Um. So would I be able to? With with being slowed, would I be able to take out my longbow and still be able to shoot yep. once? Uh, okay. Yes. Okay. So I'm gonna do that because I can do that right from where I am because I have 150 range. Mm -hmm. And that is a 17 plus three, 20. 
Lip. What was that? Lip. Okay. Did you say nope? No, schlick. Oh, schlick. <laughs> I'm like, th there's no way that guy has an armor class of over 20. I mean, he might. No. He's just low. <laughs> All right. Just level two. <laughs> okay, let's see what damage we get. Come on. Eight. Eight plus one. Nine. Nice. That's still pretty damn good. Slow me, motherfucker. I'm also going to. Can I also, like, I know I can't do another action, but can I talk to the kid? Yes. That's a free action. Okay. Go behind a rock, but don't touch one. All right. I want him out of, like, range of things. He kind of scurries down to the south away from the fray. Okay. And make me your wisdom safe. Oh, oh, yay. Okay. Come on. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> that's another six. All right. Um, he turns his attention. Oh wait, no, he, he he Glenn gets to go. Yay! Get him, Glenn Coco. Um, so because I'm about there, Ow. so she's just gonna run up. So she's about thirty feet from him. And casts produce flame. Gonna burninate the peasants. You know what? That cloak seemed pretty flammable. I'm going for it. Let's see if the man inside is flammable. <laughs> All right. Ooh, it's a five. That's a mess. I had a question about range on the bows. Mm -hmm. This is eight feet slash three hundred and twenty feet. What does that mean? Mm. Short range yeah. versus long range. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? I think... Uh, so... Let's see. 80 versus 320. There is a penalty to range, and I forgot to apply it. Um, I'm just going to let it slide this time, but we'll... Yeah, we'll you, can get, you can still attempt to hit... Oh, okay, so like your first one is what you can hit within range without any penalty. Uh... The other one is you can still attempt to hit within that range, but you might, you'll probably, I think it's disadvantaged. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, okay. Like I have 150 with my longbow, but I have up to 600. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it would be at disadvantage after 150. Gotcha, gotcha. Right. gotcha. Uh, well, Go on, you're please. the only one in this radius, so I guess it's you. Cool. Uh, there is a sudden, loud, ringing noise that centers from inside you, Whoa. followed by a boom about you. The rocks that are surrounding you, you can hear this whoosh as they kind of start, cracks appear and then start to, to crumble down. Oh no. Make a constitution saving throw, please. Don't forget you have your inspiration. I don't. Thank you for that. No, not, not Glenn, just Atlas. Oh, thank God, it's a 20. Plus you don't two. have to roll. You don't have oh, to roll, it's yeah, just Atlas. Me. Oh, I thought you were talking to me. Nope. No. Sorry. You moved away from him. Okay. So you do save. However, you do still take half damage, so you do take five damage. Okay. So was that was? Yep. Yeah. Oh, wait. 14 minus five. That's nine. Okay. All right. Um, then it's my turn. It is your turn. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. I didn't cut out for anyone, did I? No. Oh, unless it's oh boy. Okay. Yeah, I'm Atlas? Yeah, sorry. Uh yeah. Back. 
Oh, whoa. Hello. Pierce is trying to figure out what to do. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> I'm trying to do that. <laughs> I was afraid it was my turn already. No, you're <laughs> good. I feel like it always takes a while in turn, but then the second you have to use the bathroom, they're like, oh, we've been waiting oh, on yeah. you. <laughs> you can do about that. <laughs> Let's see. He's just going to cast. He's going to cast uh, Ice Knife as well. One of his attacks. So, uh, attack spell, a uh, spell attack or whatever is a d20, right? Yes, uh, d20 plus plus yeah. the modifier. Cool. Yeah. Eighteen. That's a hit. And then dexterity saving throw to see if he takes. Oof. He saves, but roll the 1d10. Damage is damage. We're doing it in general instead of dice pit. Oops. <laughs> Three. My prerogative. I'm allowed. Three? Okay. Alrighty. What song is this? Oh, Mountain Song. Okay. All right, uh, it is a uh, Wick's turn. I'm gonna go up 30 feet again and grab another javelin because I have four more. Do the same thing. All right. Just reckless once again because you die mad about it. <laughs> um, uh, 16. That is a miss. Damn it. Oh. Uh, you notice as the, the javelin strikes, it hits his shoulder and you hear a chunk And some of his robe tears. And you can see he's actually wearing some sort of stone armor underneath. Oh. Oh. It's uh, August time. Alrighty. Um, I can move 15 feet. Forward yeah. seduction of everyone else. You didn't make uh, your saving throw? Uh, no, remember I made another six. Oh, right, right. Um, so. so I'm just going to do 15 feet up that way, just now that the kid is a little out of the fray. Yep. Um, and I'm just going to keep hitting. I'm going to try to hit him again with my bow and arrow. Oh, one second, I got to roll something first. Okay. This might actually change how you do stuff. Okay. Um, because I just realized. And this is entirely my bad for forgetting it. The nerve. Uh, he actually, you are not slowed. He drops concentration of his spell. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, oh, yeah. I'm probably still going to do the same thing. <laughs> well, I mean, it means you can action surge now. Oh, yay. Yeah, I get to do two hits now. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> I'm going to... I'm gonna go up actually the full thirty then. Yep. Or yeah, to am I getting closer to everyone else? Uh if you go north you can actually so that he doesn't have protection from the rock there or cover or anything. Okay. Um, then I'll do that. And I'm going to two shots with my longbow. Hey. Sixteen plus three. That's a hit. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do the other roll real quick. Well, roll your damage first. Oh, okay. Six plus one, seven. And with that, you you finally, uh, as the uh, the the ice knife hits him, Hell yeah. uh, he loses the 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 
the the entrapment that has been done upon you. And so you take a moment to just leap forward. How do you want to do this? Um, do we want this to be lethal, non-lethal? You cannot ask Lick that question right now, so don't. <laughs> uh, we're going to defer to Glenn on this one. I mean, if he's part of the same group as the other guy, he's probably not going to give us any info. <gasps> Touche. And he's Kill not him. scared of us torturing him, right? I'm going to say that that was all like done within a look. <laughs> Like, you look at Glenn. Glenn right like, she just, like shakes her head. Nope. Don't don't give it to him. All right. Kill him. Right through the neck. Hey God. We 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 just find the perfect. <laughs> we are murder hobos, but in this case, everyone we have murdered has That's deserved it. Hell. Realistically, I don't think he's going to give us any info. Nope. I also worry, though, that we just murdered a man in front of a child that he might know. That kid's seen some shit. Yeah, I mean, that's, that scene you just posted, that's Glenn Coco. <laughs> I'm trying to... Where did, where did yeah. you post that? General. Main general. general. Okay, there it goes. Mm. Mood. Nothing showing up for me. I don't, oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> you, uh. Your bow aims true as the arrow shoots through his neck. He is dead before he hits the ground that he loves so much. <laughs> Eat shit. I love that this is the like the third man we've killed without even knowing his name. Uh, Why would we have to name? I think this is him? like the the eighth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay, I meant the third big guy. That's fine. So, uh, he has upon him some items. <laughs> uh, he has his. Uh, he no, has a glaive that he's not even using. Um, like, comfort the kid. <laughs> so, uh, you guys can, like, you know, delve in and see what he has. He is wearing splint mail, which is AC-17 for those who like heavy armor. Oh. And... I'm sure he's got other things. I'm sure there's something else going on here. He said splint mail? Yes. Okay. I'm not sure if that's better or worse than what you have. But no, it's also got know. kind of an... Just writing it down. It's got kind of an earthy appearance. Oh. 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 I don't know okay. what that is, but all right. You're Cheers, welcome. baby. What? Well... I have nitro, and I realized I have boost, and I was like, <laughs> oh... I want to boost the server. In terms of treasure, he's not really carrying anything except for four uh, trade bars of dwarven make, each a right. foot long spindle of iron uh, marked with uh, pyramids on each side. These are the sorts of. Uh, these are these are kind of like the dwarven equivalent of promissory. And uh, they come from the Dwarven Labs, and it's part of their distinctive currency. Fancy. Huh. I hope the dwarves aren't that we're meeting with aren't working with this guy. Do some to tell. This might make us make them like us. With that, you have cleared the Tomb of Rising Stones. Woohoo! We Yay. did it! We've, We've learned it. nothing! We learned nothing! <laughs> we, we learned another man go. without there is, a word. There is time for uh, Aftermath 
that will occur when you guys get back to town. We'll handle that next session. Okay. okay. Right. You want me to stop no. the recording um, now? I guess I'm going to write pick up. I have, though, two With things, everything. two words that I need to say. Uh -huh. It's vitally important. Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Level three. Yes! yes! Okay. I was like, level up. That's gonna be it. Please be it. Okay, should I stop the recording now? Sure. Yes. Okay. Uh, Are you... you won't officially be level three until you're done with, like, the aftermath, but we'll handle that okay. next session. Level your characters up now. It's not gonna impact your skill set. Okay. 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 Ok